everyone, and welcome to another episode of I Hate It Here, where Sam and I, that is the grammatically correct way to say it, isn't it, uh, hate the world for uh, however many minutes, uh, so you don't have to. Uh, Sam, we've both been on holiday, yeah. been recharging the batteries, getting refreshed. I say holiday, you were working, but I guess any time away from me is a holiday, isn't it, in a way? <laughs> Yeah. I was, yeah, I've been grafting, but we're too bad. Yeah. I did try. Yeah. I came home yesterday. I was feeling productive, so I thought I was going to put together a garden bench, did that, but I cut all my legs and I've somehow burned myself. I don't know if it was because it was that hot yesterday, but I've got a burn mark on my knee. But Oh, it's possible, mind. I did the uh, foolishly went out barefoot. My mate came over. We had, we had, uh, we had the lads round for a bit of a barbecue and football and that, and uh, foolishly went out to meet one of them and walked on my tarmac drive, and uh, feet burnt to fuck, like, very painful. So uh, it has been absolutely scorching. Like, yeah, I've seen tarmac getting, heat. like, curved by tyres, but just dense in it. Mm. It's so yeah, yeah, it's mad. Like, it's been, weather has been mad. Now, remember, I'm not worried about that, because obviously, as Donald Trump pointed out, it is just a hoax invented by the Chinese, so I'm sure... <laughs> I'm sure by the winter we'll all be fine, uh, and it'll all you know nothing to worry about. Welcome next year to will warm be warm world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, next uh, next year will be a cool one, I'm sure. Mm. But yeah, other than that, mate, I was out in America. That was having a heat wave when I was out there. I went to Arizona. Um, oh. Yeah, 117 degrees, pushing 120. Uh, was that pretty mad. Educated? I don't know, mate. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I just look at a fucking dial, don't I, on a wall and read the number. It's all it's all nonsense. I'm not even scientific. Looks warm, I mean. wasn't it? Put it this way, it was so warm. Uh, one of the hotels I stayed in when I was down there, uh, there they had to close the uh, parking lot because all the tarmac had melted. Yeah. It was fucked. Your car would have just gone in and got stuck like quicksand. So it's all been popping off, mate. It's all been popping off. But it's good. Now we can get back to the content grind and do everyone's favourite podcast, which, of course, is this one. I hate it here. Um, not by the numbers, Sam. That's that's gone now, gone forever. <laughs> Fuck esports. So look, uh, I've had, there's loads to catch up on, but the first thing I'm going to do is obviously do a bit of uh, you know housekeeping as it relates to uh, regular recurring features on the sto uh, on the show, the the stories that we've covered repeatedly. So you know your seagulls and this one, robotic news, Sam. Remember, we've got our bet on, haven't we, about sex robots. And Do for those that are new to the show, me and Sam have a bet that in our lifetime, a sex robot will go rogue and kill somebody. Not just somebody. a sex robot, any kind of personal, me included, butlers. Like, if you start, if we get to the yes. point where we have robot butlers, that's included. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, that's fine. But, I mean, you know, if it's a, if it's a robot butler, uh, you know, the question does become, you know, will it also service you in other ways? You know, so eventually, maybe all robots yeah. become sex robots. All in one. Yeah, on a long enough timeline. But anyway, so we had this story sent in. Somebody actually sent me this and went, you are going to lose your bet to Sam. He has got your money, mate. That's what it said. So uh, this is the story reported in The Guardian. Ch a chess robot was playing chess with a seven-year-old uh, opponent. And in the middle of the game, it grabbed his finger and broke it. <laughs> Fucking hell. Is this? Is there a video of it? Because I want to know, like, was it just one grab, or did it like grab and try to yank? Or there was, there, there was, there was a video incident. Uh, I've got a video of it, which you, uh, you, I guess you. I, mean, you, I don't want to see you kick it out, but like, is it? Is well, it, it sounds just... like you do to me. No, but what I mean is, it just like a strong grip. Uh, you can have, you can you can watch the video and judge for yourself. I mean, you can edit it in in post as well if you yeah, want. Yeah, I think I'll do a. You feel inspired? Just in case. Please. But you can watch it now and tell me your reaction. I'll just sit here. You can see there's, a, there's you know, security. Fucking hell, it does look aggro like. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Kids in floods, carried away. Other kids looking on. The, the quote, after the incident, Ad and the Machine had played many previous exhibitions without upset. This is, of course, <laughs> bad. <laughs> it is. It Not is. Wrong. The fact that a chess robot has gone rogue and decided to uh, attack a child uh, is bad. Um, but yeah, a, a broken a broken finger. This, of course, uh, was uh, in in Moscow, and uh, the vice president of the Russian Chess Federation said that the robot appeared to pounce after it took one of the boy's pieces, like it was a fucking 
taunt. Um, and you, basically, rather yeah, basically than basically like just it's almost like a crush, basically. It's just like yeah. pinned him down. Yeah. Fucking hell. Um, but they were quick to blame the child. Me? Uh, so, yeah, Sergey Smagin said there were certain safety rules, and the child violated them <laughs> because he's seven. But <laughs> I was on his bad like. Well, it's, uh, he explains when he made his move, he did not realize he had to wait. This is an extremely rare case, the first I can recall. Now, what I like to think happened is, like, obviously the kid was, you know, beating the machine, yeah. maybe, and the machine's just had enough and just going, yeah, you little bastard. Like, oh, it could be a taunt. It could be like, ah, checkmate fucker, you know, and just take his little finger, just snap it off. Like, I mean, I but, don't know whether you're using it as a chess robot when it's obviously great to use as a fucking thumb war robot, mm -hmm. but undefeated in fucking thumb war. Oh, for sure, like, yeah, for sure. I wouldn't... At the end of the day, there's, there were some games I would happily play with, with the robot, but anything involving hands, that's... Arm off wrestling. Day. Yeah, arm re it's off the table, isn't it? I mean, I remember doing them. Remember them robotic arm wrestling machines? Yeah. Yeah, you used to getting bars and that. Like, they, all, they I mean, you just keep going up and up until they win, like... You, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not the world's strongest man, so I've got no chance. So, a seven-year-old kid... Fucking with this robot's got no chance, has it? But his thing, his finger's gone. So we've we've officially it's gone. Had... Well, not gone. All oh, right. I thought you. Yeah. I thought you were like, and uh, you know, to wrap up the story, his finger's gone. Uh... No, no. And to wrap up the story, his finger's gone. Um, but look, here you go. It, it, there's some more weird little statistics down the bottom. And by the way, Sam, be, uh, you're not you're not winning off these ones. These ones. Nah, nah, they still come. Right, yeah. So uh, anyway. Um, the, they, they said, oh, it must have been some kind of software or error or something. That was Sergey so Karjakin. That instills uh, confidence. Must have been, like, the yeah, code or something. <laughs> it's full fucking Skynet. We don't even know, we don't even know why it did it. Uh, this has never happened before. Uh, there are such accidents. I wish the boy good health. Of course, he's never playing chess again traumatized for life uh, and then it, the report says christopher may have been lucky robots are becoming more and more sophisticated with the most modern models capable not just of interacting but actively cooperating with humans more simply repeat the same basic action easy grab <laughs> move put down and neither nor uh, nor care if people get in the way according to a 2015 study one person is killed each year by an industrial robot in the US alone. Yeah, but Indeed. I get that. I bet that counts like bottle cappers, you no know, like machines that put the yeah, cap. Yeah, sure, You know, sure. I bet it's like getting crushed by art or something. It's basically an industrial Yeah, see, I don't really think, point. yeah, I don't think of them as robots either. They're like machines. Yeah, that's a machine. A, ro a robot is a happy birthday, Polly. It's one of them, right? <laughs> it's like, got to have like, some kind yeah. of humanoid element where they've yes. attempted to make it kind of human like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, see, good. I'm glad we agree on that. But anyway, it goes on. Uh, Robert Williams was widely considered the first death, was crushed to death by the arm of a one-ton robot, right, on Ford's Michigan production line in 1979. In 2015, a robot killed a 22-year-old contractor at one of Volkswagen's German plants, grabbing him and crushing him against a metal plate. Robots used in medical surgery were also held responsible for the deaths of 144 people between 2008 and 2013. More recently, Elaine Hertzberg was killed by an uber-automated driving car that hit her at 40 miles per hour as she crossed the road in Arizona. Got, I, had a, I was in a car with someone in Arizona with a self-driving car. That they, they were driving. Turn on. Yeah, they were driving. And they were telling me a story about how, like, literally one time they'd fallen asleep and it just kept it kept going and it was fine. That's spooky to me. It's the future, man. Well, the thing is, that. if Not every car had that test, I mean, it would be really safe because you could just, you know, interline, uh, interline the systems with each other so they all just talk to the same server or whatever. But if you only have a few of them, that's when it gets rough because you can't account for human error that quickly, surely. Now, what I'm realising, Sam, is uh, the bet I've made. I am destined to lose, aren't I? <laughs> like, it is that, man. No, yeah, there is no way I can win because if 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 people if robots have been murking people since seventy nine, 
obviously a sexual. I, I might just have. To, well, I can't remember how much we agreed. I might have just have to settle that one. I can't remember. I've, I'll, I'll take we'll a grand now, but take grand. Yeah, what a, what a take a grand. The bet the might have only been for a tenner. It might have been for a million. I'll no, take a grand right now. Jamie, you can pull up the fucking tape, mate. What are you talking about? Grand. No chance. <laughs> Fuck that. Uh, anyway, also a recurring theme on the show, seagulls. And I never thought it would happen to Wales. I never thought the Welsh would give in a big goal of all fucking places. Right? So this is the story about how Aberavon Aqua Splash, <laughs> right, which is like a splash park with water features for kids, right? It got shut down before it even got to open because the gulls went and nested in, and big gull are going, Oh, you can't move them if they're in the seagulls, it's protected. What madness is this? Right? I got almost half a million pounds in there, boy. Yeah, 350 <laughs> grand it's cost to build a splash park and the seagulls gone, that looks like a wicked place to live. Moved in, they've declared squatters' rights <laughs> and fucking Big Gull is backing them up. I, I don't even understand. Like, I, I, like, I, I know, like, listen, I go back, I, sometimes I feel guilty, Sam. Sometimes I worry. Ah, uh, with this constant gull news, are we encouraging cruelty to the gulls? Are we, are we... Not encourage I don't even... Uh, in an ideal world... All that needs to happen is the people who ring about the gulls and they say you can't do anything, they'll be like, yeah, we'll be there now. They come out, they move the gull to somewhere where it isn't annoying anyone. That's yeah. an ideal world. That's what I want. No cruelty to gulls. Just You can't just, you know, no squatters rights for gulls. Like I, I have just seen as well as uh, there's another headline on the right there that says, it's all in bloody Welsh. Car parking <laughs> machines cause long queues and complaint. I mean, you are in Wales, like, but. Just, just anyway, back to the goals. Yeah, I'm, I, it's just for me, right? Well, just read how sad this is. This report, right? And think about kids in Wales. Think about what it was like growing up in Wales. And think about you know, like when you were a, a kid with sponges stuck to you, going into school, right? And all in that, and just how there was nothing to do ever. Desperate right? for a pool. <laughs> yeah, oh, dry yeah. sponges. Yeah, dry sponges. No pool, like you know. And here you go, aqua splash. It would have tailor made to your needs. And here it is. It's the first day of the May half term and parents up and down Wales are busy planning fun activities to do with their children while they're off school. Some will be taking their youngsters to museums like the National Museum in Cardiff, very fine museum, or the National Waterfront Museum in Swansea, also good if you're into Maritimes with the Jack Bastards. While others will explore Wales' greatest markets like the recently refurbished Newport Market. It's got a link to that. Oh, right. It's not that's not that great. Never heard of it, but my money's on it being dog shit. <laughs> I mean, no, if you've been I've been to the I've been to the one that weren't refurbished. Been to Newport Market. Anyway, or smaller events in their local community like the Clan Rumney Hall of Summer Fate. Um others Fucking what are these tourist attractions we're offering? Like there's gotta you be know, something better, like fuck off. That's the best we got. A summer fate, a, an indoor market. We fuck are up. we are a bit backwards, like. Might as well say go for a pint to this go to the cinema, like <laughs> rather than do that. <laughs> no, but we are like we are like the Shire. You know that. You know okay, that is true. No. Like. Anyway, others will flock to our gorgeous beaches. We have got gorgeous beaches. Yeah, exactly. Advertise those. Yeah. Yeah. Uh parks and splash parks. But mums and dads in one Welsh town, it's Aberavon, spoiler, expecting to spend half term and a free splash park attraction will be disappointed to learn the community splash park is at to shut down temporarily before it's even opened. Aberavon Aqua Splash. It's kind of interesting, like, because that name alone, Aqua Splash, like, <laughs> splash, right? You can only splash in liquid. Right, water so, splash. Yeah, so why do they feel the need to just stipulate it is water? Don't worry, Lee. It's aqua, right? It's aqua splash. Anyway, an inclusive aquatic play area next to Aberavon Beach launched last summer and saw hundreds of chil children and their families enjoying countless days. I'm sure you could actually count them about playing in the water features and enjoying family time together. The attraction, which cost £350,000 to build, features 30 water features. Water features, as far features. as the eyes can see. Yeah, water features, including fountains. <laughs> Jets and waterfalls. It's All the out. features. And 
replaced the paddling pool and small water play area, which was popular with locals, but had to be refurbished tra tragically. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, while the Abrav and Aqua Splash page on Facebook suggested the park would be opening to the public in time for half term, Neath Port Talbot Council has confirmed it was unable to open the splash park yet, as there's a seagull, a solitary seagull, nesting on top of one of the water features. Biodiversity officers, well, it's bloody Orwellian, Sam. <laughs> Big Brother Thought Police said. <laughs> Walk Britain gone mad. <laughs> Biodiversity officers from the council. Like, who's who's got that job? Like, who's that? Like, what do you do for the council? Oh, I'll lick like envelopes. Sorry. That's what I mean. All that needs to happen is this job needs to be replaced. Instead of being an officer, you are a seagull mover. So you just ring up, hello, I need a seagull mover. Yeah, no problem. We'll get him. And then you just, you know, humanely take it somewhere where it is in a fucking 350 grand water park. <laughs> Not just bringing Aberavon social life to a halt. <laughs> like, it's over for the kids in Aberavon. Like, they're out there burning cars and committing crimes now. Because of one seagull. Like, and everyone's going, well, what can we do? Like, you know, <laughs> fucking, they have, they have got rights. You know, anyway. Biodiversity officers from the council are understood to have visited the site over the weekend and found a pair of herring gulls, were up to two, nesting on top of a water bucket attraction. Under UK law, the loved up gulls. Fill a bucket up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I would, me, like, I would just uh, turn on them taps drive. I've got a solution. Like, they'll be Fill fucking out of there in seconds. You haven't even done anything. Go, oh, I didn't know, like, accident. That's the tap one. Yeah, exactly. Actually, Under, I mean, <laughs> would it even be cruel? They're birds. Like, oh, they, they fly are away. Birds. Yeah, they yeah, are they're sea birds. birds. They fly away. Like, you, you turn the water on, they just go above it. All oh, right, yeah, problem yeah, so solved. Like, that's probably what they mean? do, actually. They just have a little of it, sit straight back down, fill it no, up your head. Let's just have a raise out that way. Now you're wasting yeah. water as well. Under UK law, the loved up seagulls <laughs> cannot be disturbed until the nest is empty. Uh, and opening the splash park to the public would amount to a disturbance under the Protected Birds Act and so would be unlawful. With this in mind, it's understood Aberham and Aquasplash cannot open until the seagull eggs have hatched and the family of seagulls move on. Wait, well, there are eggs there, so you can't wash them away. And I thought it was just, I thought they were just taking the piss out of a fucking jolly, like. Yeah, so that's what I mean. That's where the seagull mover comes in, like. Just pick up the nest. Like. <laughs> yeah, but they'll go mental, but you'd have yeah. to wear like a fucking yeah. suit of armor, but yeah, mate, you have one of them, you know, sending a jouster to move you, the mate, nest. We've got to repurpose all of them shields we bought for COVID. We make anti gull armor with it and just fucking there you go. Problem solved. Like, you can't get my eyes. I got a fucking sneeze shield on. Sneeze guard to the rescue. <laughs> move the fucking nest. Jobs are good and like, like, just put it like it's their eggs, like, they're gonna fucking go with it. Like, say, if I moved your house, you're not gonna go out while I'm living in the ruins, like, you know, you're gonna, <laughs> <laughs> gonna go to the fucking actual house with the doors and all that, aren't you? It's ridiculous. Anyway, a statement from Port Talbot Council, Neath Port Talbot, I've, I've never got used to the merger, me. Neath and probably should never done that waste of money anyway. But it's all that's all right, boomer. Like uh, <laughs> back in my day. Yeah, back in my day when it was just Port Talbot, it was way more economically efficient. Hey, right, Port Talbot Council explain herring gulls, also known as seagulls, are red listed birds. These are birds in the UK Channel Islands and the Isle of Man, uh, listed as being in the most <laughs> urgent need but of our But how health. are they extinct? Whether they the only fucking birds we see, but how? They're not, it's a lie, it's big gold. How Mate, are they they're red fucking levels? thriving. They're fucking thriving. They're everywhere. They're attacking people every day. You see a video of a seagull just, they don't even, they're not even content with chips now. Sandwiches, they're shoplifting in Greg's, eating whole sandwiches. They're attacking babies, like ice cream and chips. It's the tip of the iceberg of the seagull food chain now i said they ate, they ate that dog gizmo there's no way they're extinct there's no way they're even close to an extinction event why are they red listed someone at big gull has just pressed that button put them on the red list and then they've just pocketed a manila envelope full of like fish heads it does <laughs> it was dust the whole time anyway um red listed birds these include some of our rarest birds 
<laughs> so rare I see them every day, like, so rare. I live down the road from Birmingham and we have seagulls here. <laughs> we're in the mid we're Midlands. Probably got in, in the train, but... Oh, yeah, probably, like. Hen Harriers and Kappa Keely. I don't know what they are. But also familiar birds, like house sparrows and starlings, who have suffered huge declines against sparrows extinct. I see more seagulls and sparrows, mate, <laughs> these days. Wait, anyway... What? Although the location of this herring gull nest is unfortunate, it's good to see them nesting locally. It's not. I disagree. The nest in Aqua Splash is on a tipping bucket feature, and it has been observed that the large bucket is currently quite full with rainwater. Oh, no. With the design of the feature, once it gets to a certain volume, it will automatically tip and potentially wash the nest away. So, get this, they're also so saying... So God decides. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> they're saying, but because any human interference around the nest would result in a disturbance, we can't intervene to prevent that from happening. Well, look, how, how, well, how's, how, are they, how did they weigh up intervening to save them from rainwater, but didn't weigh up intervening to get the park open? Think of the kids. Shocking. I never thought I'd see whales in the grip of Big Gull. <laughs> but here we are. Right, next up, we can move on from the seagulls. Because loads happened, when, of course, when I went to uh, the States. Like, I mean, it was ridiculous. Boris Johnson went. You know, did you see that? Yeah. <laughs> you seen I mean, that? Yeah. Mm. Had to happen, uh, eventually. But, uh, yeah, there was just loads of stuff happening. So we'll get to a little bit of that, right? But first, this story blew my mind. Because, like, obviously, the other thing I'm always harping on about, right? Sam says sex robots are going to get you. I say seagulls are going to get you. But hopefully the one thing we can sort of agree uh, with is technology 100% going to get you. And is getting you. This story blew my mind. Like, even I didn't think we'd be where we are as quick uh, as, as we got to. I've always been mega skeptical about, you know, Siri and Alexa, and who's the other one? Um, it's like, an, well, I can't remember all their names. But anyway, the, the you know, the automated Yahoo. assistants, the automated assistants, you know, that, like, you're talking. I fucking hate it. My mates come over, right, and they sit in my chair, <laughs> right, and they take the fucking fire stick, and they push the button and go, like, you know, get me uh, this, this, this. And they talk into it. And that's all recorded, like. That's all recorded. That's influencing things that Amazon's going to recommend to me. You know, that's that's going on a list of data that's being sold to some other cunt. And I wish they wouldn't do it. I've got all the PS5 muted and everything. You can't trust them. They're, they're, you've, you're putting <laughs> surveillance devices in your house. And everyone says, they all say the same thing, Richard. Oh, you've gone mad, Richard. You, you're mental. You've smoked too much bad granola. It's broke <laughs> your brain, right? But lo and behold, this story from July, so last month at the time of recording this, uh, Amazon had, had to admit that they had given footage from their, you know, uh, Ring cameras that you put, you know, like yeah. the, it's just called Ring. It's like a sort of automated remote monitoring doorbell. Yeah. So you can, like, let people in with parcels or see who's on your doorstep and all this stuff, and you don't even have to be in the house. They had been giving footage to the police without a warrant or even informing the people who'd installed it. That's mental, mate. Yeah. That is mental. You're installing... The, like, put it this way, at least with Siri... And uh, Siri's just selling my data to China or something. She's not going to grass me up for smoking a joint in my living room, right? She's not going to, oh, Richard, what are you doing there? I don't know why she talks Time like that, to change but... your habits. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Richard, are you aware that that is a Class B controlled substance? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Marijuana like, yeah. odor detected. <laughs> calling, calling local federal <laughs> yeah. police. Yeah, calling constabulary. Hello, I'd like to report a weed smoking. It's ridiculous, like, so, and this happened 11 times, 11 times they've done this too, and it was, it, it, this only came out because a senator in America had asked them about it, so, 
Here it is. Ring, Amazon's perennial... And this was reported in The Intercept. We don't often feature The Intercept on IA here, but here we are. Uh, Ring, Amazon's perennially controversial and police-friendly surveillance subsidiary has long defended its cosy relationship with law enforcement by pointing out that cops can only get access to a camera owner's recordings with their express permission or a court order. But in response to recent questions from Senator Ed Markey, the company stated that it had provided police with user footage 11 times this year alone without either of those criteria. Last month, Markey wrote to Amazon asking it to clarify Ring's ever-expanding relationship with American police, who've increasingly come to rely on the company's growing resi residential surveillance dragnet and to commit to a raft of policy reforms. In a July response from Brian Hoosman, the Amazon vice president of public policy. It, see, see how dystopian that is? like you're you're a shop you're an online shop and you have a vice president of public policy it just sounds so fucked up anyway the company declined to permanently agree to any of the reforms in which included never accept financial contributions from police agencies never allow immigration enforcement agencies to request ring recordings and never participate in police sting operations so they won't even publicly commit to not being involved in, in setting you up, in trapping you. It's mental. Um, so, I, I, you know, I thought it was bad enough when we did it on the previous show where the Amazon had recorded, basically there'd been a murder, that like the dude had uh, killed his wife, I think. And they asked for recordings. These recordings, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and they had them like, arguing or something. And it's like, that's that's it recording in the background. They all said it didn't do that. <laughs> and then you hear that this noteworthy case where they do do that door, don't they, door? <laughs> and you're just yeah, stuck no. with it. That's fucking, mate, I'm telling you. Have you got any of that shit in your... Nah. I, I, it's not even that, but it's just like, it's fucking useless. I, what, what do you really need, like... Think of how easy people's lives are. You really can't open your phone to play music. Fuck up, but fucking get a grip. You know what I mean? What my what my mate always complains about when he comes over and insists on using the voice activation is it takes too long to type for what like you're looking he... for. Yeah, no. Fucking hell, you can't. That's what I mean. But everyone needs a no, 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 no. Can't spend fifteen yeah. seconds typing in the no. name of the film you want. Like fucking yeah. slow down, slow down. I know. Slow down, mate. Here's the thing. Uh, you know, he'll be asking me to visit him in prison when they, you know, use his, like, language to confess to a crime. <laughs> like, on, you know what I mean? I did <laughs> assassinate the prime minister or whatever, and then he, he goes down for it. You know what I mean? And, like, oh, uh, Richard, come and see me. No, fuck up. You shouldn't have done it. You did it yourself. Like, I know you're innocent, but you did do this to yourself. <laughs> But by willingly participating in this, Your Honor, this he's innocent, but I'm not asked. <laughs> this thing as well. Can you imagine? Uh, and uh, uh, this is what blows my mind. I wrote an article back in like 2010. I wrote a series of articles. It was back when I was like writing regularly, trying to actually be a writer before I gave up on my dreams. And uh, <laughs> I was right. I used to I used to write write these articles, and I did loads of them. And I, I was talking about like because what set it off in my mind was I used to have this girlfriend. And I used to go around her gaff, sleep over, and she had work in the mornings, and I worked in eSports, so time was a flat circle, you know. And uh, she she lived in a mall. It was like, it was housing that was built into a mall. Luxury apartments, like mega expensive. But in the mornings, when she was getting up for work, I'd be like lying in bed, like trying to get a few extra in while she's, you know, showering and making breakfast. And I just want to get up, get a cup of coffee and bolt, you know. But I could hear coming through like the window, like the mall opening. And it would be like, attention, residents, today's deals. And it was like passive advertising to the luxury residents of a mall house. Yeah, like what yeah. the fuck is this? Like, That's and then Epcot Center ish, like, yeah, you live right? where you work. You work where you live. Oh, it's just Ballardian. It's it, it, it's high rise. You know, it, it's 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 exactly what happened in fucking High Rise by Ballard. And and you know, uh, I, and I read an article 
uh, around about the same time, where in some countries in like, you know, South America and Latin America and, uh, you know, Mexico, I think was another one. Uh, Amazon had these huge warehouses where they, they, they built cheap housing into the warehouse because they were like so remote. They just, the, the work to do the amount of hours Amazon expected them to do, they had to build the housing in the warehouse. There's no way to commute. So you are living in a house owned by your... It's like old industry old times, basically, like coal mining yeah. times. Yeah, yeah, they used to do that shit. Uh, you know, where where I grew up, uh, they uh, I, I used to do voluntary work with the elderly. And uh, the, how's this for a sick twist of fate uh the old workhouse and for those that know about the Ken, you know like fucking not the Kensian, but you know victorian and early industrial 1900s britain the workhouse is like where kids like went uh to basically work in like looms and there was no like child labor laws like basically you just threw kids into the machinery and uh and, and you know they would they would just be in there like working because they were small their hands could get into the bits that other people couldn't do they could do more fine work in and the kids you know like you just pay me go have a have a fred or <laughs> just send them on their way like you know what i mean so you know no work is right turn off and and uh the old workhouse that was active you know up to whenever the fuck that was like the old people's home <laughs> so it spent it you know it spent its invention you know, of like just wrecking kids and then, you know, spent its uh, later years wrecking the elderly. Well, man, it's horrible, you know, just it's fucking, I can't believe it. It's, it's like you say, it's so regressive to like live in, a, live in a property that's owned by your boss. How how can I ever successfully win a work dispute then as a, as a you know, what, what cards am I really holding? Yeah, if you ever want to uh, move job, you're probably gonna have to leave your house as well. So yeah, yeah, exactly. You have to, well, you, you know, and, and then where do I go? What if my family's in there? You know, it's fucking, it's mad. And so I was writing these articles. You have been moved how, like, to another district. <laughs> yeah, I was writing these articles about like, you know, how eventually we'll have machinery installed in a house where it'll be like it'll instantly communicate with like your landlord. You know, and be like, you are you are late with your rent, and it'll automatically lock you out. Or like, you have had, uh, f you know, too many days off work. Residency closed. Residency closed, and you just have to stay in a hotel. You know, cards that like, if you're in a bar and you want to get a load on, you get, you know, you have had eight drinks, no more, no more, and it's just, you know, like we're we're really, fu like, I don't, you want less automation on your personal life, surely. Yeah. Bad enough they're taking all the cash away as well. It's going to be all just numbers on a page that the bank can just shut off on a hard drive. We're just marching into it. We all like, oh, this is gay. <laughs> I don't have to type. What you you're killing us? <laughs> Whatever. Fuck, fuck my friends. I, I'm doubling down now. I'm going to ban them. It's banned in my house now because of this report. Uh, but yeah, read it. It's on the intercept. Uh, it'll it'll uh, open your eyes. Now another thing I hate, obviously, TikTok. <laughs> while while we're here, TikTok uh, obviously is is horrific. Not only is it a Chinese spying device, I never thought I'd hear these words coming out of my mouth. Corrupts the youth, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it does though. Yeah, they're probably. all they're all doing ridiculous things. Like it's killing people again. <laughs> People are doing these TikTok challenges, like you know the no oxygen challenge. Like, well, I know how that one ends. Like, you die. So, don't do that one. Don't do that challenge. I saw one. I, I put it in the Discord the other day. It was like kids put in a like they put a, they hold a lighter up. Yeah. And then they take another lighter. Yeah. And snap it in their mouths. And you oh. go and you and you you, you explode. Did you create an explosion in front of your own face. Yep, and they say, witness me. <laughs> That's unreal. Oh, that I thought you were going to say, like, the old light that are links can. Like, I did that when I was younger, which mm -hmm. is dangerous as fuck, because it can go back into the can and blow your hand off, which did that oh, yeah. loads of times. Loads of oh, times. Fucking hell, that's a twist. Yeah, so basically, they like they they light the flame, and then they say, like, because it was popular in China, so they say the equivalent of, like, witness me, brothers. And then they fucking snap that. It's just one of this kid. He's about eight. He just flies. He just flies. Across. I don't even know how. I don't even know how it generates so much force. Just fucking throws him across. There was a guy dressed as Batman. 
doing it. It's mad. Like, well, at least he had a mask on. Burnt his lips off. <laughs> 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 but literally, he was there afterwards. Uh, all skin. Oh. Yeah, all the skin gone. Like, yeah, you, you can't. Fu- it's fire for fuck's sake. Stop fucking around. Anyway, I saw this one. Uh, this was just again like, why? Why is this happening? So, so a TikTok influencer, right? Saw a jellyfish on the beach. Kissed it. They picked it up and licked it. Ah, Dalo. And it was a Portuguese man of war. <laughs> Is that like the most deadliest animal or deadliest jellyfish? Yeah, like I swear dead, that's like one of the most likely things uh, yeah, to kill you it, in the sea. I think I think like it's uh, it, an irakanji is is worse. Maybe I don't know. I'm not up on my jellyfish hierarchy at the moment, but it's one of the most poisonous ones. Anyway, it says here, uh, right. Um, blah, 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 blah. Oh yeah, that was last time we saw a lizard chew was the most venomous creature known to science because it handled the deadly, dangerous blue ring octopus, a tiny and beautiful creature that mixes enough venom to kill 26 adults in a, ma- in a matter of minutes. Although it was dangerous beyond belief, this time we have something more wild. Uh, with a million followers, a popular TikTok user, Alex Revid, posted a video showing her upside down lifting and licking a blue jellyfish on the beach (laughs) first of all if it's blue like anything bright in nature's gonna get you like it's saying look at this color don't fuck about that's that's it right uh look guys there's a jellyfish he says i'm going to take it i'm gonna put it on my lips yeah what does it look like yeah it's a jellyfish look how big it is it's still going. I'm going to lick it. And then it was identified as a Portuguese man of war, one of the most dangerous creatures in the sea. <laughs> and you can watch the video if you want. Again, you can put it in in post. I just don't understand. Like, wouldn't you Google it first? In it. At least, just at least. Like, just Blue jellyfish, eyes. safe to lick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, exactly. The problem is, he probably didn't have Alexa, so he, you know, he was yeah, like, ah, t- I ain't I'll typing just, that. Yeah, I ain't typing I'll that. I'll take me at least eight seconds. I'll just gamble, like, just gamble my life on licking a jellyfish. Like, mental. Um, so, anyway, TikTok's awful. <laughs> it's not much more to be said about that one. Uh, but this, this I did enjoy. This was a report that I really did in, enjoy. Um, now, you know, obviously, in my world or back, Back when I was in esports, Sam, uh, I used to do a lot of uh, reporting, didn't I, on the old match fixing and, and gambling and betting and everything else, right? So um, the, I saw this story and I just thought it was it was brilliant. Uh, so, right, there were a bunch... Obviously, if you're going to gamble, you, you know, and you're into your gambling, people will gamble on uh, anything and everything, even stuff... They don't understand. Like, I remember when I was in Vegas, I think I saw people betting on like little league baseball. Like better, kids. Yeah, kids kids playing like baseball. Like high school lacrosse. Just yeah, like, like random what, yeah. shit. And it's like, how, what can you really know about it? Like, uh, there was a group of uh, Indians that got wind of Russians wanting to bet on the Indian Premier League. The Indian Premier League is the, you know, as it sounds, it is the premier competition for cricket. It's a league. Loads of, you know, famous cricketers play domestically. Lots of money, unbelievable amounts of money pumped into it. But Russia isn't one of the big cricket nations. So a group of Indian lads came up with the idea of we could actually scam the Russians by playing fake cricket games and tell uh, and do a fake broadcast and tell them it's the Indian Premier League. And so they did. They went with this scam. Here it is, uh, it, as it was written down in the paper. I'll read it to you. Uh, it, it says here, it's not cricket, uh, but a Gujarat village almost pulled off an elaborate con with a fake Indian Premier League, complete with hired farm laborers masquerading as players, <laughs> someone doing a mimic of the commentator Harsha Borgi, and even an official telegram channel to take bets on it for a remote audience of Russian punters who were addicted to betting on cricket after watching T20. The charade playing out in a remote farm at Molapur village, Masana's Vadnagar Taluka, 
reached the knockout quarterfinal stage before the organisers of the Indian Premier Cricket League were caught out by the cops. That was in air quotes. The con gang would accept bets from punters in the Russian cities of Tiva, Voronezh and Moscow, you've heard of that one, on fake cricket matches, which were broadcast over a YouTube channel just labelled IPL. And they did it for over a fortnight. What made the grand fraud even more audacious was that the fake matches started three weeks after the real Indian Premier <laughs> League had concluded. All it took for the real-life con caper to be executed were 21 farm labourers and unemployed youths from the village who took turns wearing jerseys of the Chennai Super Kings, Mumbai Indians and Gujarat Titans. They even did umpiring, flaunting a few walkie-talkies in front of five HD cameras. Crowd noise was pumped in, uh, but uh, they downloaded the sound effects from the internet. Uh, and they had a commentator for Mirup with a talent for mimicking Harsha Borgi, and that added to the feel of the fake tournament, including punters betting their rubles on a telegram channel set up by the gang. Masana police have so far arrested four people and are investigating the rest of them. Uh, so I was like, fucking hell, that's like, that's absolutely brilliant. Like, I don't want it's anything brilliant. bad to happen. Yeah, oh yeah, I don't want anything bad to happen to these people. And then somebody got the footage right uh, now if you now mate we'll three two one this if you've seen a real cricket game whether or not you've seen the indian premier league if you just know what the standard of a real cricket game looks like the fact that these russian betters didn't think there was anything up with this at all is fucking brilliant so just uh, let, let me know when you're ready mate i'll three two one <laughs> all right Mm -hmm. Three, two, one, go. Just <laughs> the no audio. I don't think there's any audio, no. I don't think they could get the they audio. They've even put a BBC logo yeah, on Yeah, look, look, look. Look at the pitch. <laughs> <laughs> look at the run. It's absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, good hands. Good hands, mate. And, you know, the Russian guys who just sat there like, oh, yeah, this is this just is. Come on, Chennai. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, oh, you know, Papa needs some new shoes. Like, look at that swing. Like, shocking. Uh, so, so anyway, it, it's one of the best, like, sort of scams I think I've ever heard of uh, in, in ages. And it's almost like one of them where it's like, yeah, it probably is bad that they did this, but it's sort of funny enough uh you know that uh i hope they uh i hope they get away with it actually they don't go to prison or anything bad but because they're so mad and they're cricket out there apparently things aren't well, looking good be like yeah yeah apparently they're going down <laughs> so they're going down for a while uh, and it's just so sad because like the audaciousness of it you know right so speaking of fakes what about going on a fake journey sam a fake journey that you actually never get to go on this is a story uh, that I saw from, uh, well, a guy wanted to go to from London to Glasgow, right? And uh, you get these things called sleeper trains. I don't yeah, know yeah. if you've, yeah, I don't know if you've ever been on them before. Never been on one, but no one, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and generally what they are is, you know, they're no frills trains, which have like, better, you know, low light windows. They have little slats, little sleds that you can sort of sleep on. And the whole thing is you go at a time when you should be asleep anyway. And it's like a long journey, you know, typically from England to the, you know, Scotland. And you just go up there. They've got up coaches that are the equivalent of it as well. You just get in, go to sleep, you know, wake up and you're, you're there in the morning. So anyway, this guy, Jim Metcalf got on to the Caledonian Sleeper, one of the last overnight rail services that runs from London to Scotland, right? He got in, right? Got in, followed the followed the drill. He got in, he went to sleep, as you do. You get into your bed, you buy your ticket, you get into your little sled bed, you roll over, you go to sleep. He wakes up in the morning, never left the station. <laughs> <laughs> he's just slept on a fucking train overnight for no reason stuck in london unable to get to work uh jim metcalf who has been using the caledonian sleeper for 15 years said he had a bizarre experience on wednesday morning in 15 years of using this train and through many bizarre twists and turns this is the strangest yet i wake up 
The train never left. It was just sat here all night, and now we've been thrown off at 5.30 a.m. in the wrong city. Uh, I, I was traveling for work. It's hard to even know what to say. Now, the managing director or for the Caledonian sleeper said, we apologize to guests affected by the cancellation of our overnight services. Uh, this was due to a fault identified on, on the line late in the evening related to extreme temperatures which have been causing problems across the network which were outside of our control. We made all efforts to support guests impacted, including provided overnight accommodation on board and options for travel on alternative rail services. All guests will receive a full refund. Did you think to go around the train and wake everyone up? Like, Did anyone think to do that? It's called the fucking sleeper. People are sleeping. <laughs> so, Mech, poor Jim Metcalf missed his day at work. Just stuck there. So, ridiculous. What's a welcome and do, Sam? Uh, so there was that uh, that I saw. We also will have uh, a bit of uh, Japanese news here. Obviously, another crazy thing that happened. Uh, was the assassination of their former uh, Prime Minister Shinzo Abe. Yeah. Uh, just, I mean, again, like, just truly shocking to even think about a politician being shot in Japan because they don't have guns, you know, for starters. Like, it's, it, and it was indeed, like, a homemade gun. They don't bother with security details, like what you would see in America. Well, like, get down, Mr. President. The fact he's a former Prime Minister, he was just campaigning sort of on behalf of his party. And, uh, yeah, it was, it was, it was, Real, really crazy. But one of the things I always notice in the Western media is whenever you try and report about stuff uh, from Japan, uh, we are so it's you know we're so divorced from the rest of the world, particularly in America. It always just ends up being like you know stupid in some way. So, for example, uh, right, the memes went around about Shinzo Abe. You know the famous meme, Sam, don't you? Uh, about Hillary Clinton, right? Whenever someone dies, you do a tweet, you know, you you inspect element of fake tweet saying, I have information that will lead yeah, to yeah. the arrest and imprisonment of Hillary Clinton. They did that with Harambe, for fuck's sake. Well, anyway, Americans now are so sensitive about all of that stuff. Reuters took the time to do a fact check on that meme, uh, saying a fake tweet that was purportedly posted by the former Japanese prime minister has been confusing people. It's not, it's not confusing me, right? <laughs> no, it's, not, it's very clear what the fucking joke is. Um, and you can see, like, it, it got tweeted out and people were saying, is this real? Like, you, uh, you know, absolute morons. Uh, but yeah, Reuters took the time to do a full fact check on it, rating verdict false. There is no evidence the message depicted came from the account owned by Shinzo. Well Abe. done. Another <laughs> case cracked. Yeah, no, you've done it again, Reuters. Bringing credibility back to the news. But one thing that did happen off the back of uh, the Shinzo Abe uh, assassination was this running gag again about um, identifying, you, you know, you go out and you post somebody who isn't the assassin or didn't commit the crime on the internet and you wait for the news media to you know bite and uh, and and you know run with it as if it was fact and this time uh you know who they did it to everyone's favorite game creator hideo kojima news outlet is no shit now news outlets actually named hideo kojima as being the assassin of shinzo a uh by accident and you can see here there was a the, you can see this was news outlets in greece iran uh, a french politician uh spread it uh he also they because there's an image of hideo kojima wearing a joker t-shirt and everyone was saying look at this radical lunatic that did it and so it started to spread out and then by the time it kind of got to the western media where they were looking at it going well he's so ubiquitous in american yeah, you know, exactly. media culture yeah like obviously people started saying hang on isn't that hideo kojima so here you go uh the mistake started to go viral after French far-right politician Damien Rieu tweeted out pictures of Kojima in response to another politician's tweet. Far-left extremism kills, he said. Posted above a picture of Kojima uh, wearing a Soviet fur cap. 
uh, Ryu also retweeted another post from an account uh, that implicated Kojima as the killer. These have since been deleted, uh, saying it was just a bad joke. This kind of uh, blah, 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 goes down here. Oh, yeah, and then it goes, Kojima obviously had nothing to do with the assassination of Shinzo Abe. Uh, police immediately arrested the suspected shooter at the scene. His name is Tetsuya Yamagami. But again, this uh, this obviously led to some problems. I mean, if you're Hideo Kojima and you're seeing that kind of get spread in uh, the mainstream media, you know, it's like it can't be a pleasant feeling to know that there's probably some parts of the world where maybe that correction never kind of trickles down to with any sense of importance so as it was recorded uh reported uh in newspeak uh, over at the bbc he's actually weighing up whether or not to sue these people for uh, spreading this misinformation he actually put out a formal statement from kojima productions obviously his development company now and it says here kojima production strongly condemns the spread of fake news and rumors that convey false information we don't tolerate such libel and we will consider taking legal action in some of these cases uh just crazy crazy stuff um so hideo kojima implicated in an assassination out of nowhere obviously didn't do it obviously <laughs> <laughs> innocent just the guy who makes video games uh just so insane um but also uh while we were there in you know japan um had obviously that tragedy of uh, Shinzo Abe being assassinated. Also had some other problems, Sam. Another recurring thing for the show. Uh, animal news. And I don't know if you heard about this. But you probably didn't, but it, it's a story that's right up your street. Apparently, Japan have had uh, rampaging monkeys. Gangs of monkeys coming out from the wild to attack people. Just, I, I wonder if I that's wouldn't... because this picture reminds me, have you seen in Japan, there's like a hot springs you can go to and sit in and there's just yeah. monkeys everywhere. Like uh, mm. the monkeys just don't give a fuck. They're just chilling out with you. I wonder if it's because tourism down so much, maybe they're not getting as much food and treats and they're having to come closer. Like, it does make you wonder because yeah, for those who don't know Japan uh, now, it has it officially reopened for tourism at the end of June. But the stipulation is you have to go as part of a package holiday, stay with the guide, and the guide sort of has the authority to make sure you know you're not in public, you are social distancing, you are wearing masks. They're still you know Japan got hit pretty badly with COVID at some point during the pandemic. They've been very squeamish about you know reopening and and having having kind of you know unfettered uh, tourism again as a result result of that but uh yes uh it, it's certainly a possibility here's the bbc japanese police are turning to tranquilizer guns in an attempt to stem the tide of wild monkey attacks that have been terrorizing residents in recent weeks 42 people have been injured in yamaguchi city including children and the elderly the attacks were perpetrated by Japanese macaque I like monkeys. how it says they're being blamed on them. Well, they either did or they didn't, but what do you mean? <laughs> I know. He ain't Listen, got a lawyer. Did he do it or not? Like, maybe big gull, big monkey. Maybe they've got a, you know, a powerful lobby that you don't know about. Like, And it's like, ah, 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 ah. you can only blame the attacks Japanese on them. Japanese macaques are being framed it. for this crime. Yeah, exactly. The Japanese macaques. Um, it, it says it, it, they, there was a statement put out by a city official that said it's rare to see this many attacks in a short period of time. Initially, only children and women were attacked, but recently they've expanded the attacks to elderly people and sometimes adult men. <laughs> they're getting their, up their way up. It. Yeah, yeah, they're working their way up. They're like, ah, they're kids. Working off the ring like rust. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Uh, attempts to capture the animals with traps ended in failure, so police patrols were implemented uh, in an attempt to deter the culprits. Authorities are also unsure if the assaults are the work of a single rogue monkey <laughs> or a gang of monkeys. Well, it's got to be a gang. Yeah. <laughs> it's not one. Like it's not one, one bad apple. Like. Yeah, it's not battle for the planet of the apes, is it? Like you know, you know Caesar's running around doing it in Japan, like. Um, injuries have varied. Uh, reports have included scratches, bitten legs, bitten necks, and wow. bitten stomachs. Uh, a four-year-old girl was scratched in an apartment break-in, while in another instance, a monkey breached a kindergarten Where's classroom. Where's the jewelry? Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
right? But like, listen, like, oh, you know, a kid. Imagine just being a kid in kindergarten, a monkey like oh, smash through the window, like starts attacking, like terrifying shit. Um, it, 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 more on that, more on that sustained terror. Uh, some residents have reported multiple incursions in their home as the primates gain access by the popular sliding screen doors or entering through open windows during the heat. I heard crying coming from the ground floor, so I ran down, one father said to the Japanese press. I saw a monkey hunching Fuck over my yeah. child. Well, imagine how terrified you'd be, but I don't know how yeah. dangerous they are, but. I mean, that looks like it could probably rip my face off pretty quick. Like, I don't know how big his teeth are, but even that little one looks like you could have my fucking nose off. I mean, also, you know, they have picked the angriest looking macaque. They don't all look angry like that. Nah, like, when you see those videos, like, if you look it up, people always go there. Just look at the macaques in the hot springs. They're just, like, floating, just chilling. They look like humans almost. They're just like, ah, mm. lovely, and yeah. So, so I'm telling you, mate, it's all happening in Japan. It's good theory, though, that the tourism might like a tourism drove them. Because if you if you're will, if you can be in a pool with them, but I would say they're pretty much imprinted with humans at that point. Like if they're cool mm. with you just sitting in a pool, they must be relying on humans for food and other things as well. So otherwise, mm. they wouldn't let you fucking be there. For, if you were giving them anything, they'd probably freak out. Yeah, yeah. I th I, honestly, I think it's a working theory. I think you're doing better than the Japanese police in cracking there the you case. Yeah, like you should detective Sam. Open tourism up. Go fix the monkey assaults. Now, terrible things can happen in tourism as we glide into the last story for this episode of I Hate Here. How much would you be willing to pay for a Subway Sam Subway sandwiches? Oof. I'm at, on an average day, or am I on my ass like hungover, desperate for something to eat? That's the only time you would eat a subway. <laughs> so, yeah. Then, yeah, uh, then. I'd give you fifteen quid. I would give you right. double price, basically. Well, unfortunately, an Australian woman flying from Singapore back to ho by her home country didn't declare that she had a subway sandwich in her bag Jail. at landing, <laughs> and that mistake cost her eight eighteen hundred and forty dollars. From where to where? From Singapore, uh, Singapore to Australia. Australia, I hate that shit, mate. Yeah, like yeah. That TV show Customs Force or whatever. Yeah, it's right. cause basically... She's been spotted trying to bring in three corn on the cob, so obviously that's three months in jail and an $18,000 fine. It's like, fucking, oh, scared of you yeah. were bugs, but I know we'd fuck up the whatever, like, but surely yeah, not. Yeah, but surely didn't, they have it, like, didn't they have it with the, uh, the cane toad or whatever? It, like, fucking up. Yeah, that's right. I, that's, I think it happened once, you know, they just put them on yeah. edge. I understand, like, fresh produce can have microorganisms and shit and they can fuck up the whole infrastructure. But surely a subway ain't gonna do that, but what, she, you know, what do you mean? How many bugs can be in a subway? I uh, get this, like, she got off lightly, apparently. Jessica Lee, a 19-year-old model from Perth, detailed her sandwich-related snafu in a TikTok. Everyone's on TikTok, Sam. We have to get on TikTok. Do 30-second episodes of I Hate It Here for Zoomers, like, and become the most famous people in the world. Uh, this monkey has been ripping people's <laughs> face off. Yeah, exactly. Like, kind of pointing to it in the background, that Whoa. picture of a macaque. Yeah. Right, anyway, she detailed her sandwich-related snafu in a TikTok video that went viral and gained more than one and a half million views uh, as of Wednesday. Uh, Lee said she travelled to Singapore for a vacation but got hungry on the way to the airport. Uh, she bought a Subway sandwich, ate half of it. weren't even a full sandwich sandwich. We're not angry, stored... we? Yeah, exactly. Like, but I mean, they're only tiny, you begin with. like, uh, then Unless she did get a foot long and it means half, like, you know, in which case, chance. fair enough. Yeah, yeah, true. Also, yeah, you're right. It wouldn't be so in they cut in half. Yeah, it wouldn't be in this mess. Then she stored the rest in her bag during the flight. Lee acknowledged she could have declared the Subway sandwich, but never thought about it. My mind well, was just... I wouldn't I want... think you'd have to. Yeah, exactly. I wouldn't think about it. Like, you got any contraband in that it's bag of yours? It's juice. Like, it's fucking... Is that... Is that iceberg lettuce? <laughs> <laughs> get down! <laughs> yeah, get down, get down. We've got a lettuce-related incident. Oh, my God. There's meat as well. Uh, fuck it. I mean, you, mind you, you should get fined for buying Subway in this day and age anyway, in my opinion, but whatever. Anyway, my mind was, I want to get home. I want to get home. I want to get a bed. I've been traveling for 24 hours. So maybe there were signs, in, in meaning at the airport, but I didn't see a single one. Lee was fined for violating Australia's strict customs and bio some way security on it, regulations. Yeah, I know. I bet no one said sandwiches also count as contraband, like... The rules state anyone entering the country must declare goods purchased overseas, including meat, 
poultry, fish, seafood, eggs, dairy, fruit, and vegetables. Failure to report such an items can lead to a fine or even imprisonment. I reckon those rules don't count when it's just between bread, but once you put it in between bread, you know I'm eating it. Like, I'm not bringing in 40 kilograms of fucking I rare eggs. I put it to you that my client had put the contraband between bread, <laughs> thus implementing the bean law clause. That's no longer meat or poultry, but if you get a beef on its own, it's meat. If you put beef between bread, it's a sandwich. It's not meat anymore, is it? Listen, I'm, I'm, I'm the on defense your side. I, yeah, no, listen, 100%. If I'm the judge, I'm just signing off on this one. Like, you know, and it's like, you'll never, again, for the TikTok, you'll never guess what the judge said. <laughs> you know, 30 second clip. But it, it's, it, it, it does just feel a bit too over the top. Like, you're just a bit dramatic. Like, it's a subway. Like, no one got a. It's like, personal like, use. Like, I'm not yeah. dealing subways while I'm here. Like, yeah. Uh, anyway, um, you can see here, uh, it has a bit of a happy ending. Or, or how can not, you be happy after you be charged eighteen hundred dollars? Like... Here's how. Uh, Subway saw the story when it went viral, and they sent her a Subway card with eighteen hundred and forty dollars worth of what? redeemable, you know, credit on it. But that means she's now gonna have to eat Subway. She's probably gonna like make the same mistake. Go and see. She's gonna get another free Subway. <laughs> leave it in a bag. Ah, oh, it's another eighteen hundred gone. Ma imagine it, like, imagine it. Just ridiculous. So yeah, uh, you know, eighteen hundred and forty dollars, world's most expensive subway. Subway, absolute trash. Uh, only in a pinch. Um, but you know what? Despite after after tuna gate with their tuna that contains no tuna, they did a good job. They've done a good job with the PR there. You got to hand yeah. it to them there. They nailed it. There you go, Sam. That's all the news for now. I guess. Uh, I know you've got to go. So I guess we'll just end it there, put a pin in it. We'll be back with more I Hate It here, certainly in a much more regular time frame. Uh, so watch out for the next episode. That was the news. I wish it wasn't. Bye.